Hey, I'm Cathlon Gamer, and welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2020. It's career mode, it's episode 124. We're in the middle of the Tour de France. It's stage 13. There are only five climbing stages at this year's tour. Five. That's it. As we are seeing this incredible turn of pace suddenly uh, at the front of the field here, led by this guy. The breakaway is not to everybody's liking. That the peloton has very, very sudden acceleration speed. has taken a very calm, uh, prepared for a final climb group. And you can see just how much fatigue there suddenly is. No one has been exempt from this as we approach the one big climb of the day. Now the peloton's at 91. It has settled down. But that pace has eliminated a lot of riders but it's also done some serious damage to my guys as well. And it takes what should have been a straightforward, simple, just survive this one all's cat. Climb. I mean, it's, it's a big climb. 15.6K, 7.5%. But instead of coming into it at full energy, as was expected, we're looking quite uh, haggard. Now, the Peloton is back together as the pace was lifted. I'm thinking more about just surviving. I do have that prime position right now. Uh, the prime position is in we are in the yellow jersey, and not the Jumbo Visma yellow jersey, but the leader of the Tour de France, Pavel Rodriguez, on 47 hours, 46 minutes, and 31 seconds. Now, he was supposed to have a plus two today. It's only a plus one, and as a whole... The team should be sitting on about a plus six net, and they actually have uh, minus one on their net. So, bad day in the draw, about a minus one across the board for the team. That's slightly worrying, but it's only one climb, and I think we'll be okay here. And actually, now that the pace is lifted, I'd rather see this thing come down to getting into the late kilometers and then maybe pushing a little bit with with my leaders but for now i'm perfectly content the pack is with increasing its work rate some teams can't be happy with breakaway, the breakaway holding just inside three minutes now we see a second acceleration let's go ahead and uh, make sure we don't have guys uh, rodriguez is not going to be a problem but make sure the others are not slipping back uh, the team that's trying to turn the pace and make this race difficult they don't have enough firepower to actually succeed at what they're doing so uh, they split the field temporarily, but then it all came back together, and now they're at the front again, and still not really doing any damage, as their climbers, their guys that are are working. This climb are features just some dreadful percentages. Weak and swarm this time, but let's see some mountain 58. It's a sprinter taking over. Good on. A little bit more of somebody who's actually capable of doing a small amount of damage anyway, with a 70 mountain rating. rating. I can and probably will at some point turn this thing off. We're inside 8k to go. Don't have anybody in the breakaway group. I'm all four having this thing get a little more difficult, but as we don't have a brilliant race day condition, it's not a big day for me. This is more about checking off a second of the five the pace mountain seems stages much too high for many and getting riders. us that much closer to being in that prime position for the end of this thing. Now, we are starting to see that degradation now that uh, is it still Asgreen? Yeah. Now that Asgreen has taken over. 76 on the resistance, not a great climber, but can last a bit longer at the tempo he's trying to set. And then he does have a few more teammates here. Almeida, that's somebody who's about to do some damage. Uh, Al Philippe, if he takes over, is going to do some damage. But Al Philippe's the one that's 6th overall. Youngles is 17th. I'm guessing Al Philippe is this is for him. And Almeida who should be the the GC type hope is uh, lagging behind a bit in that department. So Rodriguez is looking good, but teammates are gone. We're down to the four protected guys. So Berwick, go ahead and take over uh, protection duties. That means Smith. Here we go. Starting to lose riders out the back. That's a big split right there. 40 riders gone here and Smith gone. Uh, Johnson on a minus two today doing protection. Uh, he's not great on his resistance to begin with, just a 71. 
below that today. Killen also going backwards, and we can see a lot of the fields still still together, but it's not going to last much longer. Uh, I think Malar needs to be protecting again. Am I right? Seventy nine. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, not a big difference actually. Malar uh, with the seventy five resistance, maybe a slightly better option. I'll, I'll let those two ride together. Uh, we are coming up on the top actually, three point seven k. So why don't we send both Gin and Malar? And yeah, eighty sounds good. Go to the front blow this field up in these last three kilometers because Rodriguez is just fine. We're into the last third of the race. We'll soon know the final outcome. Push even harder. Let's go 85. All right, now I, I know the settings weren't perfect uh, last time out in the Champion Series. This is my first recording for the regular Career Mode Series the front group on is the new hardware software combination. I'm to still working on getting the balancing right between the game audio and my commentary audio as well as as we just blew up took out it's well over half the peloton the strongest uh, can create some gaps. one k to go to the top here berwick is going backwards and might not make it over the top of this but it's totally fine i've got gin malar for support i'd rather see a small peloton at the finish than uh, a big one. I mean, even if we only drop one or two contenders, then that's one or two contenders out of this thing. So there goes Berwick, and then we've got our three guys at just 33 left in the peloton over the top, and Rodriguez, you can see, is totally fine. Fine to the point where uh, we send him to get the water for his teammates that are doing the work. And then plenty of time for him to recover as they continue this downhill. Now we've got one rider left off the front. Uh, anyway, so I'm still f trying to find the balance between the two, as well as getting the overall level correct. I mean, in post-editing, I can adjust the level a bit, but the balance between the two, I can't. So that that's the big one to get right first. Uh, but I'm very much tweaking those settings, as well as the quality settings, which I noticed in my first recording was uh, pretty subpar. And I've upped that since it, it all changes the overall file size and it definitely does not have the same uh, kind of simplistic manner of defining the two things. Gin and Malar are very close to the end here as we've got Peloton of 38 and they're the only two pushing tempo. So uh, there's nothing to worry about breakaway rise so I can we've got 15 kilometers to the finish line spend these two's efforts at the front it looks like Dukenik and Alaphilippe are continuing to uh, support that effort so I'm, I'm happy with that I, I like a small peloton of 38 for the finish Gin and Malar are done though they are Fading through this sector. The finish line is getting close. The rider is just past the 10 Good kilometers road sign. This last little uphill section. Yeah, two riders out the back, and it happens to be. Yeah, these two. Auto. Okay, so 36 left in the peloton. Um, that's the last hill of the day. So Rodriguez cruising towards the finish. The riders are entering the last five, five kilometers go. of the stage. Kenick up in the pace, 3k to go. Two point five. Rodriguez in a good spot to try to sprint. He's not gonna win the sprint. 1.9. Hopefully Alaphilippe does not. 1.5. Okay, up that speed, up that speed, up that speed. And Final kilometer and going to attack. Be very fast. <laughs> Rodriguez. Might hang on to a podium here. No, he's fading at the last moment. He's going to lose the top three spot. Runs a out of red bar just before the finish, the and Alaphilippe takes it. Of course he does. Uh, Alaphilippe's not the concerning one. This was not a big climbing stage. That was still a sizable group. He will lose time somewhere. The uh, sixth on run, the stage. But the poor very, souls bringing up the rear very continue close to, the to make it's it to the end on the one. We're about 40 meters before the finish, maybe 60 at most. Uh, where that red bar ran out and we went from first position down to sixth. Rodriguez was never likely to win that thing. That was uh, closer than expected.
So after 13 stages, I have a five second lead over Brian Barrow. <clears throat> and those advantages came for him through the team time trial and for me through winning multiple stages. And otherwise, everybody else has lost time somewhere, somehow. Uman has lost a minute, Champasin a minute and a half, Andrade Alaphilippe at two, Tishmanu at two and a half, and Trentadu at three. And then you're already getting to the point where riders are too far back. Three is probably too far back to really threaten, but I definitely say Shockman, even though he's a strong climber at 346, is a bit out of reach. But we've seen, and we saw in the Giro, that you can absolutely lose three or four minutes on one really tough climb on one really bad day. So that's definitely not out of the question yet, and I wouldn't necessarily rule out uh, with a third of this race still to go and the majority of the climbing and the time trialing is still ahead of us that anybody within I'd say about Mernick's position still has some type of chance especially if you can pull Chris Froome Giro stage 19 a few years back where you break away early and hang on and gain minutes and where multiple riders lose many minutes with a small group at that point that's minutes behind so uh, and even just this year in this past year now in the Jira where uh, Gagenhart went from support rider well down the order he was 50 something overall after the first few stages and won Very big day ahead of us as we enter stage 14 of the Tour de France and the third of five climbing stages. Now the last two are happening at stages 18 and 19 with stage 20 being the time trial and of course 21 being the Champs-Élysées. So the final decisive stages to really battle this thing out. There's still two punchy stages and one sprint stage that Break is away. left ahead of us. Uh, but won't come Rodriguez to much, on a but plus three today. Of course, the expected plus Bob two will. that averages out over the last couple days. And as uh, I discussed a while back in episode launched. or two ago, uh, the average of worse than a minus one per day for Rodriguez worse than I mean it was below that he had what a single day with a plus one uh, or maybe two days with a plus one I think on that tour whatever it was anyway it was it was definitely a negative average uh, he was absolutely due and of course he comes into There's this thing no with the fitness the peak and the objective and, the and had a the lot of plus threes early on which rate. was expected. Some teams happy with the now the expected is plus two. Attack. Reason being he's got high motivation because he's got a yellow jersey on and he's still got the objective even though the fitness peak is now a thing of the past. Ginn on a plus three today should help. Berwick on a plus four today should help. This is a potentially good day for us. Killen and Johnson are, uh, well, it's not going to be a very good day for them, but at least, at least we got something. Let's have you take over uh, Rodriguez. Okay, Berwick's up here. Yeah, oh yeah, Berwick in 80 today with an 81 resistance. Oh, I love it. Uh, not a good day for Johnson. Look at that, 67 resistance. That hurts. So let's go ahead and get you on Berwick. Again, is going to be a top rider today, so that's an obvious one. And Telford, you would think, but the lead rider that's is now more than two minutes ahead of the peloton. Just make him a better support rider. So I guess Malar, yes, Malar is a good climber with good resistance, and that's that. Now we've got to watch out for the uh, breakaway today, as that's 22 riders away, and they've already got three minutes. We have a lot of climbing to do on this one. A lot. Uh, say we've got four big climbs, two minor climbs along the way. Uh, the smallest of the four bigger climbs is right here, eight kilometers, six and a half percent. That's definitely not a small climb, but it's going to be a big day. The pack is reducing the advantage with every turn uh, of the pedal. The breakaway is not to everybody's liking. The peloton has significantly increased its speed. Pack, so thank you, thank you for not making me sacrifice my riders for. The jersey because I'm not necessarily feeling like I'm the top contender if 
We get down to stage 19 Several and we're still in this position. Well, okay. Maybe <laughs> we can reevaluate that. But, uh, for now, I'm still thinking I'm just an outsider for the podium. Not far of an outsider, but uh, this is definitely not the same group that we went up against in the Jira. The Jira was absolutely stacked with talent. This is not Whoa, a weak Tour de France either. It's group. not like this year's Giro in real life uh, that lacked That's more than two the, minutes the kind of talent that, a couple that we have here set themselves up as pacemakers for the pack. that allowed they for a game don't have to, to pull the win. Group. But it, it's definitely not the same level of competition that we faced in that Giro. It's good, but not as good. All right, well, that first climb did some damage, but we'll we'll get some recovery in, and fortunately, again, we did not have to do the chasing. Now, the brake has pulled away a bit. They're out to 5 minutes and 20 seconds by the time they hit the top. A lot of that came on us in the attack to the top, but it blew up that breakaway as well, so some of those riders are going to start coming back. Goodness, that takes away a bit of unhurt. firepower and uh, gives them less ability to properly pull away. So we are nearly recovered here. I do need to get water before it's too late. Telford, we are still the domestic in the Yara plus four. Four minutes is the gap, so we pulled back one minute quite quickly there. And some of those riders are going to have come together. We're bringing back the at pack least is beginning two to of cut the lead. Riders. Some Looks team like managers mustn't two. appreciate the fact that there is a breakaway, given that the pack has increased its speed. Alright, next up is going to really do some damage to this field. I mean, there's already some riders out the back, and those riders that are out the back run the risk, if they don't come into a proper groupetto, they run the risk of, of getting timed out today because it's such a long... Actually, there's only 112k to go. This is not that long of a stage. It's it's more of an aggressive climbing stage that the riders the are in a portion has, above 10%. Uh, started to become known for. And no wonder there was a relatively relentless tempo from the get-go on this one. Uh, they still run the risk Some of, riders of are being missing left the time cut, getting dropped that early in the stage with a whole lot of climbing to come. So down to 19 at the front, but they're also down to 315 as we uh, pulled back a lot of time There's here. There's a sustained so rhythm at the moment. Some this climb, 13.8k, 5.7%. It's 1,400 meters of climbing, though, so this is definitely going to do some damage. It looks like both Killen and Telford, with their very low resistance today, are suffering a bit. Smith is hurting quite a bit. I think Smith might make it through this climb. Uh, Johnson might make it through this climb, but it looks like both Telford and Killen are uh, on the verge of The breakaway is not to dropped. everybody's liking. The Peloton has significantly four increased only its speed. did so much for him as he's still a weak climber. And that Peloton is definitely coming down in size as it looks like we might not have a hundred left by time we the top of this David one. The front group is disorganized and some riders are exploiting this opportunity That's breakaway to attack. attacking for the KOM. Right now, none of the breakaway riders are actually set to challenge uh, GC with the gap that they have, which really isn't that big. Smith, oh, I don't think Smith's going to make it over the top here. Come on, Smith. Hang on, hang on, buddy. He's about to get dropped right now. Yep, he does. Don't think he's going to make it As they go over on. the top, the riders breathe a sigh of relief and hope to recover Might. a bit on the way down. Might. Uh... Okay, Malar. Look at some water. 94k to go. 72 in the Peloton. I knew it was going to be under 100. Thought it might be a little closer. I thought we might have about 90 something left, but it was a tough climb. It was definitely a tough climb. Okay, here is Smith now in this group. I'd rather not see this group make it back. They're it's moving nice along at a bare lick. He's only just got to hang on. on. I'd rather not have those 13 riders. The other 12 come back. Okay, Malar coming through with the water. Uh, we've already hit the valley below, and it's a gentle uphill, so there's not going to be much recovery through here. Let's go ahead and reset how this is looking. Berwick's plus four is nice. Malar and Johnson, now the guys to sacrifice themselves do we want. They're both 80. We're oh, already at the halfway stage. 81. The pack is slowly whittling away the so lead. Yeah, well, no, Berwick's the one we'd rather protect then with the 81. Around towards the end. 
Oh, Smith's back. And bring him up, and there you go. We're back to six riders. Uh, not exactly what I was hoping for, but 97 for the peloton going forward. Okay, 77 is looking a little weak. Let's bring that up a bit. We don't want to overdo it because this is going to be a difficult triple climb here, and we're not going to get much recovery at all until the final of these three climbs. Counter by more Bridley Riders Hulman. getting reeled in. Down to just a minute to you the front of that, that? group. They are attacking the and the faces fighting the back for that of the There's a growing really number of riders left behind. And most of them will come back during this next climb. So we're bringing back quite a few right now, aren't we? Uh, Johnson and Smith got dropped on that. That was awfully fast. That was a high tempo. So Millar, protect Rodriguez, and again, protect, actually, again, you're going to protect Rodriguez, and Millar, protect Berwick. Berwick, open to red, please. Ride a little bit harder to stay up there with Rodriguez. All right, here we go. Base of the big climb, and it's already just 48 in the peloton. There's only eight riders left off the front. Looks like the back four of those are going to come in quite soon. Dukenik throwing a couple guys up the road. It's in such percentages that the Philippe. strongest can create some gaps. This is the kind of day where Alaphilippe can definitely lose time. And Noir, dang, that happened very fast. 10.6K on this one, 7.5%. After the climb we just did, this is definitely doing some damage, and this is going to be a very small peloton at the top of this one. Uh, as you can see, it's absolutely getting smaller. I think it's going to be 30 here in a moment. Down to 40 now. Halfway up, 36. Just four riders left off the front as we did bring in those four guys. Now a second of those riders has been dropped. 218 to the front of that, so no real challenge from there. Falling I behind. think we are very much looking like behind. Peloton for the stage. Uh, is that Champesson attacking? There's a rider trying to break away from the bunch. Has it 46th overall. Okay. Ninth in the KOM, 17 points. He, he's after some KOM points. That's all he had. Now he's got nothing left and he's going backwards. Oops. Bad move, buddy. Oh, oh, recovery. Second attempt. There he goes. There he goes. Again, out of energy, but yeah, okay. Malar is already four minutes behind. Dang, that happened fast. 27 left in the peloton. I we're starting the last third of the race. Left. But we're going to get very little recovery between this and our little Cat 3. Uh, so I'm not wanting to put foot down. I'd, I'd like to keep it three riders heading into the final climb. As I'm definitely riding more defensively right now than offensively uh, trying to survive. Now this does open the gap for those front three guys for, for now. But we'll see some sort of uh, acceleration on the descent, I'm sure. Okay, Berwick, go get water. 28 in the peloton. Just those four off the front. That gap out to five minutes, though, gives them a real chance on that final climb. But now we got some team sacrificing. Looks like five riders, so all of a sudden we're down to 23, with half of those being contenders, and I've got two support riders, so that's a good sign. That is a very good sign going forward, that I'm a little better off than uh, quite a few of the contenders. 25k to go. Coming up on the final climb, and this thing straight to the finish. This is the worrying part. Now it's just one rider left off the front, which is Warren Bargiel. Two minutes advantage. That's not much for the climb, especially solo. So it uh, looks like we are going to get a winner from the peloton. 
we've got the 28 plus the three that we reeled back the riders in. Are entering the and last 15 here we go into of the, the final stage. climb. The riders are going through a very tough portion with percentages above 10%. Okay, we're instantly seeing an acceleration there. Set 8284. Again, is going to use his energy gel early. 15.6k for this final climb. 7.6%. The length is a bit longer. The elevation change is similar to. Uh, Cat one before us that decimated the peloton brought it down to 30 something now 28 again that's just about far enough go ahead and use your gel uh, Berwick is not doing much better on this one so we are definitely going to see an elite group well before the top of this thing Like right now, wow, that's top three guys that's going, to going for the attack. So let's do this. You're gonna follow Gen, who's in front of you. Berwick's gonna follow you and hope to survive and take over as soon as Gen is out of energy. But Gen, you're going to counter that. Four riders going away gently. Rodriguez trying to conserve some energy though. Berwick needs to gel up. 11k. And okay. Carr, Lopez, Carapaz all trying to, to attack. Line. And we're down to 21 in the group. And now we've pulled it back. And Gin is done. Berwick, unfortunately, though, is up also at the front. done. So, Rodriguez, sit on. And we have to wait a second. Now, protect Berwick. Oof. Next acceleration. Okay, that came sooner than expected. Those guys immediately get caught and attack again. So, Rodriguez, just gentle pacing here. All back together. 18 left in the peloton. Watch out! A team leader is falling behind. Okay. To the front. A lot of riders are feeling it worse than I am, but they're feeling it nonetheless. I'd say I want to ride riders off the back, but that's probably not a good idea. That's Barrow. That's the one I got to respond to. He's only five seconds down. So let's follow attack. Is giving and an that's inch. two riders off front. He's still attacking because we're still on follow attack. And we've opened up a 22 second advantage over just 14 chase riders. Okay, now he's sat up and we're just sitting on, so this is good. Forcing him to do the work. Down to 16 seconds of the gap. The, the group chasing is getting smaller. 6k to go. I do not have energy for any sort of attack or anything like that. We are playing this mostly defensively. Gap's still there, though. That's a good thing. 5k to go. Let's go ahead and contribute. There are just 5 kilometers left. 30 seconds. Gap's growing. 5k to go. This climb is feared by many riders. The percentages are very high. Still have a gap. Now it's just eight riders in pursuit. 3.6k. I'm going to take a turn. He is quite tired. 3k to go. And a small group has made contact. I'm going to sit up. Let somebody else come forward. 2.5k to go. Gel up. I'm recovering right now. That's a good thing. Let's go solo. We have the energy. Why not? And he spurts away from the group. He's going for victory. Gel kicks in. I don't have much left, but it's only 1k to the top. Uh, they caught up. They caught up. Six hundred meters. Who's going to be the first in. to the line today? Four hundred meters for the line. Out of energy. Out of energy. Out of energy. Can we hang on over the line? Here comes Barrow. 
Here comes Barrow. Got it. <laughs> okay, stage win. Small group, four riders. Barrow, McNulty, Andrade. 40 seconds to them. Carapaz, Uman, Trentadu. We, we just won that climb. And we, we did it with plus three. Okay, it was a plus three. It was a plus three race day condition. It was it was a good day. But again, I, I, I know most of you are definitely in support of my ride style and how I've done and some have have offered the opposite end the criticism and and definitely suggested in the Giro that bringing up the race day condition as a factor for not winning was unfounded but we can clearly see here Rodriguez has won three stages in this tour and he has not had a plus five he has not had a plus four he's had some plus threes he's had plus ones but that is a major difference that average plus two plus three that we've had in this tour which is right what he's supposed to have had he has not benefited from extra but last time he had no reason to have positive, and he actually had negative as the average. He averaged a minus one here. We've averaged that plus two, plus three that we should have because of the preparation. That is the difference. Also, I again, noted that there's no Yermakov here. There's no 85 Mountain. There's no Bernal. So I'm benefiting from that. But that's not to say that Barrow, McNulty, Andrade, Carapaz, Uman, Trentadu, Champasson, Alaphilippe, Barguil are weak climbers. All of them are very strong climbers. Mernick has an 81, 82. Berto Zeta, 15th on the stage there. But those are all strong climbers. I'm an 82 base. That is not stronger than those guys around me. Most of them are 80 plus. So 82 is a little better. But that race day condition makes a massive, massive difference. There's still th two more climbing stages. That's three of the five. There's still a time trial to go. Things look good, but it's not over. It's nowhere near over yet. There's a lot of race still to come. I do not make myself the favorite yet, but that again contributes towards podium looking pretty good. 40 seconds after that top and four. Here are the key so that's gonna of open the a little gap. Plus an additional 10 seconds for claiming the stage going to open a little more of a gap but that's still that's almost 10 riders at the top of the climb more or less together Oof, only 30 seconds uh, I counted 40 but okay 30 second gap still plus 10 seconds that still adds 40 seconds over these guys they all come in same time we get same time minute 43 to Bargill who had nothing left at the top breakaway rider trying to go for it Big gaps out of after the top nine. So how are we looking now? Barrow also picked up some bonus time, so I only gain four seconds over him as he was there at the top. So very, very tight for the top step. Uman, minute and a half down, so that's still pretty tight. That gap has not opened. Champison now at 205, and Drade at 205. Those guys are on the same time. 240 to Alaphilippe. Trying to do McNulty, Tish Benut. Okay, there. Now you can look at a cutoff here. Bargill on back. Six and a half minutes. Those guys are not going to contend with either. I can blow up and drop below that point. Barrow could blow up and drop below that point. But Rodriguez, Barrow, Uman, Champasin, Andrade aren't all going to blow up and drop below that point. So, uh, top nine. I'm still in contention. There's only two mountain stages left, so there are opportunities for somebody to blow up and them gain time maybe from a breakaway are, are starting to run out. But things are looking good at the top right now. Second in the KOM, just three points behind Barrow. Simmons, 
the one who's actually going for the KOM is three points behind us, so six points off the lead, still has a real chance at winning that. Uh, they just need to get into some breaks. Champsin also up there in the order, uh, but Champsin, Uman, Andrade are all too high up the GC to go into breaks. So Simmons, clear advantage compared to the rest for a shot at winning that KOM, but it looks like Barrow or I actually still could claim it. Under 25, still a definite contest here at the top. Zeta all the way up in fifth place at 11.49 down. That's not bad for somebody who is a 72 mountain rating. And as a team, fourth place, just four seconds behind Dukenik. 60% of the climbs are done. 50% of the punchy stages are done if you count the time trial as a punchy stage. We still have one time trial to go. This one, the individual. And we still have two remaining sprint stages. The next one, that, that's the following stage, stage 15. So uh, we'll put that one behind us. And then we'll be on stage 16 and 17 for the next stage. Downhill finishes. Always a place that I can do a, a relatively well at. So I, I like my chances of getting easy results there. But I don't expect riders to lose time. Maybe. I can drop one or two of the top 10 with a team effort attacking over the top of those climbs and, and opening a gap. It would be nice between this climb uh, and this climb if we're able to do something with that and, and, and get a few riders to lose some time. But ultimately, I think contenders should all still be there. But again, it's possible we could get a little something. Uh, 18... The next climbing stage, the penultimate climbing stage, three climbs back to back, 180k for the stage. Long and hard, small group, anything could happen, especially depending on the race day condition. Stage 19, short, it's only 110k. That's a long, gradual descent. Not all the riders, it's possible that not all the riders will recover, but that's, I mean, that's almost 50k of descent. <laughs> that's pretty lengthy uh what are we looking at that's 13 16 maybe so it's almost a 40 or over over 40 kilometer descent if you count if you exclude this part it's about 40k but gradual how much will they actually recover for that final climb i'm assuming quite a lot it will not be a full group but stage 19 i don't expect to have huge time gaps with that small of a finishing climb and that long of a descent ahead of time. Then the time trial should favor us, though doesn't mean we'll win it. Uh, and 21 is Champs Elysees, so plenty still to play for. Two hill stages, two mountain stages, and one time trial that could impact uh, the results. And it's still a tight contest, but. We obviously couldn't be in a much better position than we're in right now. So far, so good. Two-thirds behind us. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. That does it for this episode. Be sure to hit that like button. I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there, and bye for now.